Hey guys, so this is um, Sanctification and Righteousness Lesson 4, and um, I'm calling this, How Did We Get Here? So have you ever stopped to think and just like ponder, how did we get here? Like how, how has society degraded this bad? How are politicians this evil? How are the youth this misdirected? Have you ever just like stopped to think about that? So, um, I was reading Romans one day and I was like, here it is, here's the answer. <laughs> and I did know the answer, but I was studying it so deeply that it took a different meaning. And I wanted to um, share this with you because it does link back into righteousness and um, sanctification. So here we go. Um, if you want to um, just pre-read Romans chapters one and two, it probably will um, be quick for you. Um, and if not, that's fine. You could just push on. It'll be, um, but if you want to be more familiar with what you're, you know, going through, but I'm going to start at verse 16, um, in chapter one of Romans. So for, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and for the Greek for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith at it as it is written the just shall live by faith now as a reminder um, if you've not been dialed into this entire sanctification series the just refers to those that through faith have believed with actionable faith they have done things in obedience that have caused them to be sanctified regenerated and renewed by the Holy Spirit and they are walking in the Holy Spirit that state is called justification. You are legally justified by God that you are sin free. Okay. He sees you as he sees Christ. So now we're going to get to the next chunk of Romans one and two. Okay. Now, because YouTube has a very strong bias against my religion, um, I am going to not be able to dig into this as deeply as I would like to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you the text from the Bible, and then I'm going to show you some images that I've made of a graphic that explains the entire text. Then I'm going to read some other um, different verses. And at the end, I'm going to scroll and flip through different pages so that if you don't have availability to go to the link in the um, bio below to download the information, you can still see the information and screenshot it if that's what you need to do. So below everything, I'm going to have the Greek words in what they actually mean um, translated in our vernacular now, okay? Because we've lost a lot in language over the years and it can get confusing. You think you know what a word means because that's how we take it. But it really doesn't matter what we think. It matters what the Greek says, what that word means. And then we have to turn that into our vernacular now. So I did that on the entire bunch of passage I'm going to read with these images. Okay, so let me get going. So here's the um, basic. I'm going to give you the one um, full sheet where you can like take a screenshot of the whole thing and blow it up later and then I'm going to scroll through um, what I'm talking about. Romans 1 18 through 19 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it in them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse because although they knew god they did not glorify him as god nor were they thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened professing to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image made like a corruptible man as birds and four-footed animals and creeping things therefore god also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of god for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen god gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. 
Likewise, also, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Then Romans chapter two, this talks about God's righteous judgment. God's righteous judgment, Romans two, one. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish, and on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law unto themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts and in their conscience, also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts, accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. At this point, I want to read to you the words of Jesus from the book of John, and I will give a shout out and a thank you to a subscriber named Thank You Jesus. Um, because under the video called um, Going Up Next 2, um, they wrote that that reminded them very strongly of John 15 and 16. And I read those um, after that comment and I was like, yes, this is perfect. And it matches exactly this lesson that I was doing. So I'm going to read to you that and a few other things. So um, I just think this like is hand in hand with sanctification, righteousness, and this Romans 1 and 2. It's super amazing. Check this out. This is Jesus' own words. John 14, 1 through 20. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on, you know him and have seen him. And then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. 
So Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. For if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Um, A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, and you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that he that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear the fruit itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine and you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask, the Father in my name he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Now if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If they had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, who I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. John 16. 
These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues, yes. The time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go away with him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And all these things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Okay, so here's um, parallel verses from what Jesus says, two things that we've covered in this study. So I go and prepare a place for you. This represents the hope of heaven, Colossians 1, 5, because the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Um... I will come again and receive you. This is talking about the rapture. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. Um, when it talks about the way, it says, I am the way and um, and where I go, you know the way. That's talking about Christ. So John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. Also, he is the truth. So Romans 2, 8, the contentious. Do not obey the truth, that's Christ, but obey unrighteousness. If they had known me, you would have known my father also. So there are two verses that go with that one. Leviticus 10, 3, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all people I must be glorified. John four fourteen. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Then it talks about um, the one true God, his Son, is Jesus Christ. Believe in me, it says, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And whatever you ask in my name, Acts 10, 43, to him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sins. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. So this is representing the Holy Trinity. And then um, Romans 8, 1, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And Galatians 5, 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. This one says, he dwells with you and will be in you. 1 Corinthians 1, 22, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Then, um, because I live, you will live also. Romans 2, 7, eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality. First Samuel 15, 22, and 23, it is better. Because I live, you will live also. Second Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He who has my commandments and keeps them. First Samuel 15, 22, to 23, to obey is better than sacrifice, for the rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. Okay, so on to John 15. We've got my father is the vine dresser. So Psalm 121.5, the Lord is your keeper. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Matthew 3.10, so every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. Luke 13.7, he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, Leviticus 25.3, Six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. 
Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Luke um, 13, 7. So cut it down if it's not bearing any fruit, right? Psalm eleven three, Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bring forth fruit in its season. And Romans 7, 4, that we should bear good fruit to God. That matches up with verse 5, bears much fruit. That is, um, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Okay, the next verse 6, um, does not abide in me, he is cast out. So, cast out, this is Isaiah 5, 6. I will lay it to waste, it shall not be pruned or dug. Jeremiah 21, 12, and 14, because of your evil doings, but I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire in its forest, and it shall devour all things around it. If you abide in me, verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So Second John 1, 9b, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Um, also, First John 2, 24, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will also abide in the Son and in the Father. Verse 8, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So Proverbs 12, 12, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 1 John 4, 13, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And Romans 6, 22, but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness at the end and the end everlasting life. Verse 9, as the Father loved me, so Luke 9, 35, a voice came out of the clouds, this is my beloved Son, hear him. Um, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So First John 2, 23, now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. First John 2, 28, abide in him that we Abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, verse 11, my joy remains in you, that your joy may be full. Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Romans fourteen seventeen. the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Uh, verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. First John 5, 3, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to to the tree of life, and they may enter through the gates to the city. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jumping down to verse 16. Whatever you ask in the Father, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So Acts 16, 18 and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and he came out of her that very hour verse 17 these things i command you that you love one another first john 5 3 for this is the love of god that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome romans 13 8 b for he who loves another has fulfilled the law Verse 18, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. First Peter 4, 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of the glory of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Jumping down to verse 21, because they do not know him who sent me. First John 4, 8, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 22, but now they have no excuse for sin. Romans 1.20, so they are without excuse. Um, now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. Second John 1.9, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Notice in verse 25, it says, But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Their law that means the Pharisees or the Talmud. That is not God's law. Verse 26, but when the helper comes, 
whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So 1 John 4.13, by this we know that we abide in him and that he in us because he has given us of his Spirit. Um, and you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So 1 John 5, 6, this is he who came by the water and the blood, Jesus Christ, and it is the spirit who bears witness because, because the spirit is truth. And John 21, 25, this is written by John, who was one of the people who knew him from the beginning. And there also are many other things that Jesus did, which they, if they were written one by one, I suppose that not even the world itself could contain the books that would be written. Now we're talking about getting the gift of the helper or the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. How do you get the helper? Acts 2, 38. Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Titus 3, 5. Not by works with by which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So here's an image. There's baptism. That allows sanctification to happen. This is all work of the Holy Spirit. That allows the regeneration to occur, which allows the renewal, which is a continual life process. So jumping down to um, John 16, verse 2, um, they will put you out of the synagogues. Who will? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're the ones who run the synagogues. Um, and verse 3, they have not known the Father nor me, because they are not of God. Um, then Romans 1, 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, he gave them over to a debased mind. Verse 5. But now I go away to him who sent me. Ephesians 1.20. He, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Jumping down to verse 8. He will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Um, Romans 1 32 who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same things but also approve of them and those who practice them why is he going to judge of sin because they do not believe in me Mark 16 15 to 16 go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and then James 2, 9, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Verse 10 of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Second Thessalonians 2, 12, that they all may be condemned who did not believe in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now notice that John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So this references that they don't believe in the truth, that is Jesus. They do not believe in Jesus. Well, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So Revelation 20, 12 supports that with, and the dead were judged by their works, and works are under the law, which means they will be cast into hell. In verse 13, it says, the spirit of truth guides you into all truth. And whatever he hears, he will speak. So obviously it's coming from the truth. Again, John 14, 6, this is coming from Jesus. And then it goes to Ephesians 5, 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Okay, so the conclusion, this is super amazing. So all of the things, the sanctification theology that's come down through the years, and we've looked at everything, we've looked through the scripture and see what that says. Um, and then the concept of walking in the spirit and being that causing you to become righteous, right? Those concepts that are in lessons one, two, three, four, right? All of that is summed up in Jesus words that he's saying right before he goes to be killed on the cross so that he can die, be buried, raised again. And then all of us are freed from sin who choose to believe him, obey and, and take him as our leader, right? So anyone that chooses to live in unrighteousness and be outside of this offering of grace um, is not only rejecting God's grace, but also the opportunity to be led by the Holy Spirit. So they are rejecting the truth. That is Jesus. That's his other name, the truth. They are rejecting the truth, Messiah's own words. They're rejecting that. 
um, which are defined as truth. So if you reject truth, then that cycles you back into Romans 1. So they that are without witness, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. That darkness multiplied among millions of people across the globe. Okay, that darkness just keeps spinning darker and darker and darker, okay? If you take millions of people, which are now probably the majority of people that do not believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Messiah, okay? When you say that, that that's the populace of the world, and you look at that, those darkened voices have become the loudest voices. Those, the, these are the masses of people that vote in every country. These are the masses of leaders. They are filled with darkness because they're like, nah, that Jesus thing, that's not real. That's what they think. Or worse, they're like, oh yeah, Jesus, he's a good guy, but you know, I'm in charge of my life. You can't have it both ways, guys. So these people with the darkness that are within them, which are the majority on the earth, um, they basically do not glorify God and they do see themselves as the point of wisdom. They're smarter. They know better. Okay. This is the same for those outside of the church and inside of the church. Remember back when we did the lesson of the royal priesthood, the priests were set up. They were considered holy, but someone offered an offering that was to a false idol. And what was God's um, rationale for why he dropped those people with fire instantly dead it says in Leviticus 10 3 the Lord spoke those who come near me must be regarded as holy and before all the people I must be glorified so you want to take that very important thing and take it off the pedestal God's not going to be glorified God's not going to be regarded as holy then the masses of people that that take him off the pedestal are why we're in the situation we're in. Now, check this out. So all of these people that are going to be taken off the earth via translation, so the people who are very obedient and they don't have to stay here for the war, or in rapture, the people who get their act together during the war and they get themselves together before rapture, okay? These two groups of people they eventually, or now, glorify the Lord and live in righteousness. That's the one thing they will have in common by the time they're allowed to leave, okay? Now, for those left behind, so either you're um, in rebellion or you're left behind for the war and you gotta figure out if you're gonna choose Christ all the way or whatever, so if you're left behind, you will get the just rewards for a person who has an unrighteous lifestyle because God sees that as sin. You don't worship and glorify God. Therefore, you are unrighteous. Therefore, you deserve justice. And the justice is going to be wrath. It's not going to be happy. Even though we're in the right now in the end times and all going to see this stuff, the, the very you know beginnings of it, God still offers his grace to all the people. He's like, still, I know we're about to like pull the trigger on this deal, but I'm still asking you, please come. Change your mind, come to me. And then after the anointed leave and the few obedient faithfuls leave, then there's the war. And a lot of people are gonna go, hmm, okay. I might've made a wrong choice. What do I have to do again? I gotta figure out what I have to do to get out of here, okay? So let's say they finally figure it out and they're like, I'm gonna worship God now this is going to be great. And I'm going to obey all the things that I'm supposed to obey. And I'm going to get my act together. And they repent. They come with a nice soft heart. And God's like, great. Okay. So then it's rapture, right? And all those people disappear. But then there's still people left because there's all the wicked people. And then there's the people that are still in rebellion, but they haven't been turned into believers yet, but they're the rebels and they later turn into the hiders, right? And they are saved, but they do have to go through the entire tribulation in this um, kind of struggle of a lifestyle. Okay, so since this is the dynamic we're looking at, I want to show you how the wisdom of Isaiah, written for 40 forevers ago, lines up exactly with what we're talking about today.
Okay, check this out. The righteous that are taken home. Isaiah 57 verses 1 and 2 verses 13b and verse 15. Here it goes. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. He shall enter into peace, heaven. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in what? Uprightness. But he who puts his trust in me shall possess the land and inherit my holy mountain. Anyone? Gaboa? Okay. <laughs> For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and the holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Now, here's the deal. Let's say you're in the second group. You think I'm bats right now, okay? But after we leave, you're not gonna think I'm bats anymore. You're gonna be like, mm, I should have paid attention to that. I have to go rewatch that video, okay? So let's say you get your act together and you're finally saved and you get to go at the rapture, okay? Here's your part of the Isaiah 57, verses 17 through 19. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I hid and was angry, and he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts to him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of his lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. Now, to the unrighteous. Now, this is not really address the hiders. The hiders are kind of their own category, but this does address the unrighteous. So it's Isaiah 57 verses three through six, um, 13a and 20 through 21. But come here, you sons of sorcerers, you offspring of the adulterer and the harlot. Whom do you ridicule? Against whom do you make a wide mouth and stick out the tongue? Are you not children of transgression, offspring of falsehood, inflaming yourselves with gods under every tree, slaying the children in the valleys and under the cliffs of the rocks among the smooth stones of the stream is your portion they they are your lot even to them you have poured a drink offering you have offered a grain offering should i receive comfort in these when you cry out let your collection of idols deliver you and let the wind carry them all away a breath will take them but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God for the wicked. So what can we take off all of this? The entire series plus all these different scriptures I just read. God is completely consistent, bumper to bumper. Genesis to Revelation, he's never changed his character. He still says, glorify me, obey me, live righteous, and I consider that holiness, and you can come to my house. But if you don't want to do that, and you think you're like the best thing ever, well, you're going to get whatever consequences come, okay? So this is how I want to end this, because um, when I read all of that, I just thought, this is so amazing, like that God is just revealing all of this consistency in this, so yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. First Chronicles 29, 11. So that's it for me for this series. Um, now I will just let music play and these language pieces that are super essential tons of work you can either download or watch them screenshot them whatever you need to do i'll let it scroll through and um, i hope you have a good day and see you next time